I'm a PhD student in statistics at Cornell and also the student faculty liaison in my department. Here's what you need to know about the unfolding graduate admission situation in 2025. I'm simply presenting the facts of what you need to know and none of this is a reflection of any official statement from Cornell. On January 27th, the Trump administration implemented a freeze on federal grants and loans, potentially cutting billions in funding, primarily affecting research universities. In response, universities promptly halted spending on federal grants, including travel, new research initiatives, and expenses such as scientific equipment. However, although President Trump reversed the order on the 29th of January, universities had already begun suspending expenditures by that time. The quick reversal from Washington, D.C. followed a federal judge issuing an injunction against the funding pause, temporarily blocking the administration's efforts to restrict payments for federal grants and assistance programs. However, some payments are still not going out because Trump's team has halted some grant review meetings, exploiting a loophole in the process, as stated by Aaron Hoskins, an RNA biochemist at UW-Madison, who's had to reconsider hiring graduate students because of a frozen grant application. Furthermore, the administration has slashed over 1,300 employees at the CDC and as many as 1,500 employees at the NIH, both under short notice. On top of this, what's wreaking havoc at research universities across the US is the uncertainty caused by the February 7th order imposing a new policy to cap indirect costs for NIH research grants at 15%. Indirect costs are facilities and administration costs, which includes the cost to, for example, operate and maintain equipment and facilities, and also pay for supplies. For reference, Harvard University's NIH indirect rate was 69% last year, meaning the NIH covered $135 million of its indirect cost expenses. Under the new policy, Harvard would receive less than a quarter of this. Federal Judge Angel Kelly halted the policy on Monday with a temporary restraining order the day it went into effect. This was in response to two lawsuits charging the new policy violates federal law. The situation extends beyond the NIH to also the NSF and Department of Energy, but for brevity, I will leave you with the links to learn more about the specifics of these organizations in the description below. Now that you have the context, here's exactly how this situation is affecting graduate school admissions in the United States. UPenn administration notified department chairs that it will cut admissions across graduate programs, a decision faculty members say was made after the program had already accepted students. Some faculty members had already offered acceptances to students they had thought were admitted, only to now face the possibility of having to cut those students from the program. One professor at UPenn says that their department, which submitted its choices for admits to the graduate program on February 14th, will be forced to rescind acceptances of 10 out of those 17 students. North Carolina State University Executive Vice Chancellor Warwick Arden told college deans, vice provosts, and senior vice provosts that he was implementing an immediate pause on all hiring activities in response to the uncertainty about the federal budget. In a refreshing piece of good news, however, for graduate student applicants, Arden wrote that student workers, including graduate school appointments, as well as part-time and temporary employees, are not included in the pause on hiring. At the University of Southern California, faculty in some departments were told to pause admissions and not formalize offers to students, even those who had visited and been given verbal acceptances. Jennifer Unger, a professor who runs a doctoral program in health behavior research at USC, said that she will still not be able to admit the six graduate students her department had accepted after a visit day. Faculty at the University of Washington School of Public Health received an email to pause offers to doctoral students as well as offers of financial support to graduate students. Faculty hiring was also frozen, the email said. Later, the public health school sent out another email informing the community that some faculty hiring and PhD student offers would continue, but at a greatly diminished level. Stanford President John Levin and Provost Jenny Martinez sent out a university-wide email detailing a hiring freeze for all staff at Stanford, citing the funding uncertainty in the NIH and the NSF. The vast majority of the funding being cut is presumably directed to the School of Medicine. It's unclear whether the hiring freeze extends to either student research positions or temporary staff, though the administration stated that critically needed positions may be approved by senior leadership. Faculty hiring, student workers, and externally funded research positions are explicitly exempt 
however, for now, suggesting that Stanford aims to preserve its core academic research function while tightening administrative expenditures. You may have even heard of the University of Pittsburgh's complete graduate admissions freeze, but you'll probably be relieved to hear that this was just lifted and admissions are now resuming at UPIT. We should keep in mind that not all hope is lost. It seems that graduate admissions councils are reeling from the uncertainty of the funding situation, especially in fields that are often funded by the NIH and Department of Energy. In the coming weeks, as the uncertainty lessens, more information will be available to faculty to make proper decisions for graduate admissions. Evidence suggests, however, that less offers will probably be made and admissions committees are expecting a higher acceptance rate of the offers that are extended to applicants. If you're currently applying to graduate school, the situation is tough, but hopefully it's not all doom and gloom. Here are a few things that you can think about if you're applying this cycle. You can firstly stay informed, so you want to follow updates from universities and funding agencies. Many departments are still figuring out their next steps and decision might shift in the coming weeks. And you can also reach out to faculty. If you've applied, consider checking with potential advisors to express your continued interest and ask if they have any updates on the situation. You could also consider alternative funding sources. You can kind of look into some fellowships, some assistantships, external grants that aren't really tied to federal funding. This may alleviate the burden of the university of having to provide the funding for you to admit you into their program. And as we navigate through this uncertain time, remember that this is temporary. Universities are working to navigate these challenges and funding uncertainties like these have happened before. You will succeed in your career even if the timing or funding situation changes along the way. Although I wish I could provide some more positive news and guidance at this time, this is the current situation of admissions across the United States, especially in health or energy related fields. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them or talk to administrators at Cornell that might know the answer. And if you found this video useful, make sure to send it to other folks that might find it relevant and like and subscribe for more updates on grad school and academic life.